Hi, I'm Scott, and today on Goldwing Docks, the Monimoto 7 Anti-Theft Motorcycle GPS Tracker, coming up next. So you're on a motorcycle trip, you're tired, you want to pull over, you want to call it a day, you find a motel, you park your bike in the motel lot, it's kind of sketchy looking, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be all right, right? Nobody's going to touch your bike. Or are they? Well, this will tell you. What this is, is a tiny little tracking device that you hide in your bike. And it has a little key fob that comes with it that you put on your key ring. So anytime the key fob is anywhere in the vicinity of the bike, this thing's deactivated. However, if you, someone comes up and disturbs your bike, they move it, they steal it, and the key fob's nowhere nearby, this thing goes into alarm mode. It sends a message to your phone to let you know that someone's messing with your bike, and then it starts tracking. As long as the thing keeps moving, it sends out GPS tracking signals to your phone every few minutes. So if someone's stolen your bike, you know exactly where it is. You may even get an insurance discount for having this. Now it's battery powered. It has two AA lithium cells inside it that are non-rechargeable but are replaceable. The, the batteries last about a year and you can replace them for about $5. It does require a service because it uses the cellular networks to send tracking signals to your phone. Uh, the first two months are free. After that, I believe it's about $4 a month, not very much. And because it's battery powered, it's not hooked into the wiring of your bike. So if, if thieves disconnect the battery of your bike to try to disable any alarm systems, it's not affected. It'll still work. The tracking device will still function. I did actually intend to feature this about a year ago, but the version they had then was discontinued because it was using an older cellular technology that was being discontinued. This is the newest version that uses LTE networks, which is the current cellular technology in use. Of course, it's also good not just for theft, but if somebody were to knock into your bike or knock your bike over or even just get on your bike and sit on it, it's, the motion is going to set this off and you'll find out about it. So let's open it up and have a look. It has a seal on the bottom. Let us know that nobody else has opened this thing up. All right, so let's see what's inside. All right, so we have a card that basically just says download the app. So we're going to look for the Monimoto app. And let's have a look at what we have in here. All right, so here's our instructions. Not too much in the way of instructions. It's a whole lot of pictures. Now oh, it says for the full user guide, visit that address. And then a whole bunch of lawyers speak about what you can't or shouldn't do about it, do with it. So it basically says download the app, remove the battery tabs or the insulators to activate it, then put the thing in the motorcycle. And then it says if you go riding without the fob, it will set off the alarm and send you the location. So I can read those instructions fairly well. So here's the actual tracking unit itself. It comes with that. It comes with a set of uh, kind of removable zip ties, which is nice that they're removable so you can undo it and get into it to uh, change the batteries. As you can see, you can push it through and they, they lock in place, but then you can push that button down there and they come back out. So that's for fastening it in place. And let's see, we have the batteries in here, and as you can see, these are Energizer lithium batteries. I've used these before in my spot device. They last a really long time, and more importantly, they stay um, active even if they're not used. Unlike some batteries that die over time if you don't use them, these hold their charge for a very, very long time. Um, they're good for in items that are just sitting idle for long periods of time. It does have what appears to be a, a silicone seal around the battery compartment, so it is in fact waterproof. And then the key fob itself has 
a separate battery in it. I believe it's a little coin cell and I don't see a way of opening it other than maybe this little tab right here. There we go. So inside this is a rather large cell, CR2450. I don't think I've ever seen a lithium cell that big before, which is obviously the reason for the size of the uh, this uh, key fob itself. It's not a, a small little thing. So I don't know if I would keep this on my keychain or if I would just put it in my pocket, maybe. Maybe in the pocket of my riding gear so it's always with me. So we'll snap this back together. And it again has a silicone seal that makes it weatherproof. Okay, so let's remove this tab, which should activate this unit. We will then download the application and see what it has to say. All right, I've downloaded the Monimoto app on my cell phone and it says sign in with phone or sign in with Google. We'll sign in with phone. And it's going to ask me my cell phone number and verify that. So I will do that. All right, so now that I've verified my cell phone, it says, okay, open Monimoto. If your Monimoto came with a SIM card, it did not because it has a built-in SIM card. Remove the plastic strip. Well, I've been sitting here editing this video and realized that the next five minutes is me just following the very simple and clear instructions and setting this thing up. And it was boring me just watching it as I was editing it. So I know it's gonna bore you. Uh, basically, you just follow the really simple instructions. It says, uh, you know, place this next to that, make sure the serial numbers match, make sure the light is flashing, blah, blah, blah. It's really simple. Uh, you can't do it wrong. This, the, the setup instructions, once you get the app loaded and working, it's really simple. It's literally step by step. Okay, this has worked, now do this. Okay, that worked, now do that. Uh, really, really good instructions, uh, really clear, really simple. So that's what I did. I'm gonna cut out the next five minutes of, of just set up because it's boring. All right, so I've put the key fob on the other side of the house, about 30 feet away. My phone is sitting here idle. Yeah, the uh, detecting device is just sitting here. Let's see what happens if we move this. All right, I'm back in the editing suite again. Um, I got so far along in this video and I realized I just have to scrap the whole rest of it because, well, basically I was talking out of my ass. I, uh, I had made some assumptions based on how I thought the thing was working. I went out and tested it set the alarm off. I thought, okay, well, now I understand how it works. And I sat and talked about how it worked. And then I realized that I was actually completely wrong. So the first test you saw I did right there, I took the thing, I took the key fob and I walked and put it on the other side of the house. So the key fob was not near it. And then I went and shook it. And I thought, well, it'll be setting off the alarm any second now and nothing happened. So I thought, well, that's a bit odd. So then I took the thing, got in my car, started driving around the block. And within 30 seconds, my phone rang. And the phone rang, the number it showed was the Monimoto number that it, it gives you during the setup saying, hey, put this number in your phone. If you ever get a call from this, it's the alarm happening. So the phone rang, it was from that number. I picked up the call and I heard a computerized voice say, alarm. alarm. And then it hung up. So I thought, okay, well, that's the notice of the alarm. The idea being that if they just send you a text message, you're gonna ignore it. But you know, your phone rings, you look at it. If it says, says phone ring, it says Monimoto alarm, then hey, you're, it's gonna get your attention. Um, just a few seconds after that, the, the Monimoto app popped up and it said uh, alarm triggered. And about a minute, not even a minute after that, it came up and said, well, actually, you can see here, I'll put the events up on the screen so you can see in the app what it showed. So it had the event log and you can see the initial alarm came up and then it came up with a, a generalized location. Now that's what happens when you get uh, just a location based on the cell tower. So it's, it's kind of inaccurate. If you click on the little map icon on the event, it actually pops up Google Maps and shows you where it is. It'll show you a circle basically near where the thing is based on the cell tower location. Uh, a minute or so after that, it gives you a GPS location. 
uh, and that's accurate to within you know, a few feet. And if you click on that, it shows you a dot exactly. Here's where the tracker was. Now, the, the whole point behind that is if somebody steals your bike and puts it in a parking garage or somewhere where it can't get a GPS signal, it still knows where it is, generally speaking, because it can triangulate off uh, cell towers. And so it'll give you a, still give you a location. It's not as accurate as the GPS location, but it's still pretty good. So that's what I got. It was definitely working. So then I came back to the house and tried to figure out why couldn't I get it to trigger even though the key fob was in the other side of the house and realized the key fob range is really extensive. Uh, it can go hundreds of feet. And there's actually a setting in the app where you can change that. So I changed the key fob range using that setting function till it was almost all the way down to the bottom. And I made it so that uh, as long as, the, as I've got the key fob and I'm on the bike, it's working fine. But if I take the key fob into the house, now somebody messes with the bike, it sets off the alarm. So, and it just took a little bit of trial error adjusting. The, there's a little slider that lets you, that you can change the key fob sensitivity in, in the, the cell phone app. So if you look at the uh, app main screen, it shows the current status. It shows you the battery. You can look at the battery, both the uh, tracker itself and the key fob. You can see the current status and you can see in this one here, it shows that it's currently in alarm because it was at the time I took this shot. You can put it in sleep mode. So if you got to send it to the repair shop or something, you want to deactivate it, you can do that. And then of course, here's the event log that I talked about. And this just scrolls back in time. You can see all the different events that occurred. Now, when an alarm is occurring and the alarm continues to occur, which means the bike is still being moved, still sensing motion, it's still sensing the location is changing and the key fob is not nearby. As long as that alarm mode continues to trigger, uh, the tracker will send updates to its position every five minutes. There's also a settings screen in the application. Once you've got there, you can hit that connect button. Uh, when you're nearby the tracker, it will connect via Bluetooth and then you can go in and change all kinds of different parameters in the tracker itself, including the key fob sensitivity. You can uh, tell it how often the tracker is going to wake up and check for updates. It defaults to once per day. And the reason you want to have it connect and look for updates is because what if somebody stole it with the key fob? Say you uh, left the keys in the bike and somebody stole your bike with the keys in it. What you can do is open this app and say, hey, uh, the bike has been stolen with the key fob. And what it will do is deregister the key fob from the account. So the next time the tracker checks in, it will see an, an instruction saying, hey, delete the key fob. And as soon as that happens, it will instantly go into an alarm and start reporting back his position. So even though it was stolen with the key fob, you can force it remotely to go in alarm mode and start tracking the motorcycle. Of course, it can take up to 24 hours for that to occur because you have to wait for the tracker to check in. And depending on how often you have it checking in, uh, that will take some time. Now you can change how often that happens. If you have it check in more often, it uses up the batteries faster. Uh, the one day check in is how you want to have it set if it's going to be lasting for a year or so. Also in the settings screen, you can top up the SIM. If you just click on that, then you can see that you get the SIM top up screen where you can put in your credit card and whatnot and purchase a year's worth of service for 36 euros, however much that works out to. Alexa, what is 36 euros in dollars? 36 euros is about 42 US dollars and 18 cents. So $42 uh, per year. So just a little bit over $3 a month. So it's not a bad deal. So it seems to actually work really well. I'm, I'm surprised. Uh, the instructions are, well, kind of crap. The app is fairly straightforward. The app works and it, it seems like it's a good product. So I'm gonna take this now and I will stick it in my bike and uh, hide it somewhere. Um, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, I gotta say, this is a, a worthwhile product. And as always, I will put a link below to this product in the description. If you think this is a worthwhile product, you want to uh, maybe purchase it for your own bike, please use that link in our description. It's an affiliate link. We make a few dollars off of Amazon, which really helps us in bringing these product reviews and the forum and these videos to you. I hope this video was of some use to you. It's a, a really interesting product. I think it definitely has its purposes. 
Uh, some people may not need it. Other people may find it really useful. Of course, it's not just applicable to motorcycles. You can put one in your car, your tractor, your front end loader, whatever. But it, it's definitely a useful item. It definitely works. And uh, I think it's worthwhile looking into for your bike. It's, it's cheap insurance. If you like what you saw, please help us out. Click subscribe and then that little bell next to it. That way you'll get a notification every time we post a, a new video. And of course, if you have any comments, post them down below. We'd like to know what you like, what you don't like, any ideas you might have. We read all the comments. Thanks for watching.